get started. Everything from you know, minor home repairs to make sure there are grab bars in the showers, to meal preparation, to companionship for seniors to overcome isolation, help seniors learn technology. There's a hundred things. And what we want local communities to do is think creatively and innovatively about what volunteer services will really help them. The grant money will go to local communities to recruit and train volunteers and to keep those programs going. Those involved in heading it up have seen firsthand the struggles that caregivers face. My mother developed MS. She and my father had a real struggle uh, to try to figure out uh, really what she needed in, in, at home. Uh, she had the world's best health care insurance and it really didn't do the job. <laughs> uh, the burden fell on my father to try to figure out you know, how to help her uh, day in and day out and it was really too much. The National Volunteer Care Corps plans to act fast and will have an application for local volunteer groups to fill out soon on caregiveraction.org. Microsoft is taking new steps to help protect your privacy. The company says it will enforce the rules set by a new California law nationwide. Law makes it mandatory that companies tell you what information they have on you and you can ask for it to be removed. It also allows people to sue in connection to certain data breaches. All right, let's get back to our lineup here. And a na nationwide doctor shortage is frustrating patients and it's stretching doctors to the max. Well, we're going to take a look at what's being done to address this issue. There are major concerns about a doctor shortage. Some expect the U.S. to be 122,000 doctors short of meeting demand by 2032. Alicia Nieves is looking into why and what's being done to help. If you recently waited in a crowded doctor's office or you called to make an appointment and were told the next available is in several weeks or months, you've already experienced the effects of America's doctor shortage. Hello. It has become more common for doctors like New Jersey urologist Thomas Muller. So how you been? To practice with the packed patient schedule. The amount of patients we see is is borderline insane. I'll be the first one to say I don't think it's the best thing in the world. I, the things that I do to combat it is I, I just invest a lot of time beforehand. Dr. Muller and the team of physicians at Delaware Valley Urology each see upwards of 50 to 60 patients a day and that still is not enough. With the baby boomers becoming you know, in their 70s, um, there are a lot of people to be seen. The overall structure of medicine, at least as far as training is concerned, they've never really increased the enrollment in medical schools. Unless significant steps are taken, the Association of American Medical Colleges predicts the shortage is only going to get worse. In terms of the shortage expected in the decade to come and the workload you already have, if that isn't addressed, can you take on more patients? I don't know. I, I think I'm at my max. I don't think you can do a whole lot more. To help with the issue, legislators are proposing several bills that would raise grant money for more medical residency slots and make it easier for foreign doctors to practice here. Medical schools have increased scholarships. Some have even created specific residency slots for those willing to practice in rural areas. There are folks who think that there is a shortage um, I think we have as much of a problem with a maldistribution. Dr. Bob Motley runs Jefferson University's Physician Shortage Area Program. We have about 50% uh, of all physicians in Pennsylvania that are actually clustered in three counties. But 75% of Pennsylvanians actually live outside of those areas. Motley's program has graduated roughly 400 doctors. Almost 80% are now practicing in rural communities hit the hardest by this doctor shortage. There's a lot to be learned in healthcare and we definitely have not figured it out. It's not a broken system by any stretch of imagination, but it's things that are ever changing and I think everyone's striving to make it better. In addition to seeing 50 to 60 patients a day, Dr. Muller also trains residents with the approach of teaching them to handle the patient load for now as is. It's not for the faint of heart, but at the same time uh, we do it because we love it. I'm Alicia Nieves.
Alicia, thank you. Let's start the Now News feed. A former McDonald's employee is suing the company for sexual harassment. She's one of at least 50 workers who have filed charges against the company over the past three years. McDonald's recently firing its CEO for having a consensual relationship with an employee. A new study says destructive hurricanes are hitting more often. Researchers looked at how widespread the damage from the hurricanes were, and experts say the storms are hitting three times more frequently than a century ago. Well, this next story might have you rethinking late night snacking. The American Heart Association saying that women who are late night eaters could have an increased risk of heart disease. Researchers said the more you eat late, the more negative impact on your BMI, blood sugar, and blood pressure. A new children's book has splashed onto the scene from a local author who says the story was three decades in the making. Tonight, the Now's Mike Randall has the story behind the story. He's done a lot of writing over the years. Writing is an easy craft. You just sit down at a computer and open up a vein. Paul Camara was a journalist, advertising copywriter, teacher, and freelancer. I like to say independent writer rather than freelance because freelance has the word free in it. Retired now, Paul finally got around to publishing his first children's book. Captain Dragon's Unstoppable Flying Machine. He wrote the story for his daughters, Catherine and Christy. And it just came to me, and honestly, it flowed out of me. The colorful, action-packed piece is an obvious kid pleaser. If you look out your window, it's bound to be seen, this majestic perpetual motion machine. Captain Dragon's Unstoppable Flying Machine was just published in October, but it was actually written 30 years ago. 1990, I physically typed out the manuscript. He wrote it down on paper back then, but... Basically, more or less forgot about it until every once in a while it would, it would be brought up again. And those little girls are all grown up now. My kids were 11 and 7 at the time. They're 40 and 36 now. <laughs> Paul plans to surprise his oldest daughter with the book. She lives in Florida. Catherine, who's getting married in December and is going to be surprised as heck, does not know about it yet, Mike, and we're hoping we're going to keep it that way until I spring it at the reception. The book is available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble, and it could be a great holiday gift. And if this one uh, resonates well enough with folks, uh, I think it'll make, uh, we'll make a, a, a sequel. Yeah, and then maybe there'll be a movie. And, no. <laughs> 30 years in the making. He seldom goes out. He likes staying inside, especially when his machine is outside for a ride. Captain Dragon's unstoppable flying machine will be the perfect something old, something new, something special for Paul Camara's grown-up little girl. I think she's going to be pretty happy and pretty surprised. If we can all keep a secret. For the Now Buffalo, I'm Mike Randall. Sing us a song, you're the piano man. Sing us a song. The piano man himself, Billy Joel, is coming to New Era Field in August. Buffalo Bills owners Terry and Kim Pagula made the announcement in Orchard Park today. This is Billy Joel's first concert in Western New York in a decade and his first at New Era Field in 25 years. The concert is set for Saturday, August 15th. Tickets go on sale next Friday. So, I've heard that song for the past hour and a half. And yeah, I'm starting and it's to get in tired your head, of it. So you got to go <laughs> on and buy tickets. That's yes. what it's telling you to do, right? And the weather will be a lot nicer <laughs> in than, August. than it is now. <laughs> in fact, Which it feels like it, it just was August, you know? And I know, now right? I'm using my remote starter like yes. you've never you're started up. up that car before. You're crying, but your tears are freezing. It's cold out there. Look at these temperatures. We're already in the teens to 20s. When you go closer to the lake shore, it's going to be warmer because the lake is warm but then pay attention to wellsville i'm going to show you our temp did you see how much we lost ground in the temperature department our wind chills it feels like two below zero in wellsville and everyone else in the single digits now as you head more north especially towards the lakeshore you're seeing double digits here but niagara falls you're getting in on the single digits as well now let's take a look at your hour by hour forecast these lake showers are not going anywhere until tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., we're still getting stuck in this uh, winter weather advisory here. That doesn't expire until 10, so we're seeing those lake showers. But as we get closer to 10, did you see how they just dwindled down? And now it's heading up the lake through the Niagara Peninsula, but not an issue for us. We're going to start off with sunny skies, and those clouds are going to thicken as we go on throughout the day. So I was telling you, we have hope on the horizon. Now, I know 
30s are usually not a big deal, but after feeling like we're in the single digits, we're going to be 20 tomorrow, 23. 36 on Thursday, feeling warmer. Friday at 35 with some rain snow showers. And Saturday at 27, but not pictured here. Sunday and Monday, especially Monday, we're getting into the 40s, finally. So there is hope on the way. Stay, we're staying cold for a little bit, and then it will finally warm up. Enjoy that for a day. Back to you. There's less than a year to the next presidential election, and one group's calling out Congress for not doing more to protect the system. It may surprise you there is no federal oversight of election vendors. These are private companies that provide program and service voting machines, update voter registration bases, databases, and do the reporting of unofficial results on election night and more. We really do need um, to have transparency from those vendors and to have a better understanding of uh, their, their security practices. That's what the Brennan Center for Justice is arguing in a new report released today. It calls for a federal certification program of election vendors. It requires them to meet certain security standards and disclose things like who owns them and report critical incidents. Just three election vendors control more than 80% of voting systems used in the United States. Three years ago, the election system was targeted by foreign governments. There have been other critical incidents since then, like in Maryland back in 2018. One of their major election system vendors was actually under the control of a Russian oligarch uh, with very close ties to Vladimir Putin. Um, that that had been the, the case for a couple of years. They only learned about it, apparently, uh, when the FBI informed them. There's no reason um, why that kind of information uh, shouldn't be public. The Brennan Center for Justice has a petition on its homepage to get Congress to take action on election vendor oversight. Some 44% of people plan to use plastic for holiday gifts this year, according to Experian. Financial experts will tell you to budget and only spend what you can pay off. Now, there are other ways to use credit responsibly and to benefit in the process. Now through the end of the year is prime bonus season for credit card companies. Some offer cash back. For example, Discover is offering 5% cash back on what you spend on Walmart.com, Amazon, and Target through the end of the year. Now others have sign up bonus points for airline miles if you spend a certain amount within a few months. And if you're buying airline tickets, hotel rooms and gifts, well, now could be the time to take advantage. For those spending a little less, but all in one place, Experian says store credit cards offers, that well, they may be worth it. If you go to a store, for example, and they're offering discounts on purchases if you open a new account instantly, you might want